Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Lord God, you're the same today, yesterday, and forever. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, and forever. You are God, you change not. Lord, I thank you. I want to praise you for who you are. I want to praise you for all you've done in our lives, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you, Father. Lord, when things look the worst sometimes, God, that's just prelude to the best. Because, Lord, that's when you show your mighty power. God, I just give you praise, Lord. Lord, sometimes there's nothing else we can do but just lift up our hands and praise you, Lord. Lord, hallelujah. And that's what you tell us to do. You tell us, Lord, to to uh, enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for all the people watching right now, and I pray, God, the spirit of prayer and praise will be upon them, God, just in a mighty way, Lord. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Aloha, friends. Heads up, this is Larry Reed. You probably wonder why I start out praising, because uh, the fact of it is God is worthy. No matter what happens, God is worthy. Okay, I know you may think, oh, he must have made this before everything came down. No, um, I don't think it's all come down yet, but <laughs> be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is, uh, you know, I know the thing about the Trump rally, I, you know, and uh, the siege on the Capitol. And I have my opinions about that. And that is not, those that are doing destructive, uh, those those were not Trump supporters. Not, I mean, not. You know, when you get that many people, there's got bound to be some rowdy ones in there somewhere. But uh, I believe many, much of that was staged and uh, set up. And, and unfortunately, uh, probably well, very well, meaning Christians and other people just kind of followed in. And I even saw a particular video where there looked like somebody being one of those Capitol Police waving people in. So, you know, I just believe it was a setup. But uh, and then now we've got the banning of Trump on Twitter and and. Uh, and uh, Parler, here it is, Apple is stopping the Parler uh, app from being on their platform. And, uh, you know, it looks really bad, doesn't it? <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> I believe this morning I was having communion with some prayer, uh, fellow prayer warriors on the telephone. And um, just before I took the cup, uh, what I, I heard two words, and that was be strong. And I don't believe it was just for me. Uh, I believe it was for the body of Christ. Let me freeze frame this for a second. I made a mistake. The two words that came to me before communion was stand strong, not be strong. Stand strong. That's the message I believe God is saying to the body of Christ. Stand strong. So God wants us to be strong. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The Bible says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. A couple times this week, I put, posted uh, some of it on uh, Facebook, just a couple of lines of it, I think. But, um, you know, a lot of things have come down, and, and it, it looks almost like, golly, things are falling right and left. Didn't God tell us ahead of time that there's going to be a lot of shaking, a whole lot of shaking going on? And, uh, you know, and the Bible says that the church judgment starts at the house of God. But there's a lot of things that's going to shake. And uh, But what do you, what happens after the shaking? That which will stand, it will stand, and that which it will be solid. And so I believe God is, uh, you know, having us go through a process here, but many times it, it just hasn't turned out the way we thought it would. I spoke about this on one of my videos. I said that, you know, faith, the difference between faith and, and trust is faith is you're believing for something in the future. You know what I mean? It's like we're, we're hoping. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. And, uh, but then, uh, but trust, what is trust? Trust is when it doesn't quite come out the way you'd hoped, or it doesn't come out at all, or it doesn't come out in the timing you thought. And what do you do at that time? I mean, we all go through our, uh, you know, doubts or saying what's going on, or questioning. Uh, but uh, the fact of it is, uh, that's when we need to just trust God. And how do we trust God? We trust Him because we know, we know Him. Yeah, we know that His character, God is love. God is kind. God is good. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. The Bible says that uh, Jesus came to give us life, not death, life, and life more abundant. Who, who comes to steal and to kill and destroy? The devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. I just, I just praise God because of the magnificent turnout I've seen of support for Trump. That is not just a, a human thing. I mean, there's times, you know, there's a... There's people around the world that cult leaders and stuff. They can draw huge crowds, but 
if you're a believer, you can discern many times uh, that what God is doing and what's just human. And I'm telling you what, this is a uh, this was a, a God move and still is a God move. OK, God hasn't forsaken his people. Uh, the, I believe the Lord spoke to me and another person. It's uh, Exodus 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 13. The Lord says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And uh, I mean, this may sound negative to you, but sometimes you have to get down and and just get think of the worst possible scenario. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, what's the worst thing can happen? You can die, right? <laughs> what's going to be after that? <laughs> you're going to live forever. <laughs> That's right. So what's the worst thing do we is, is we can go to be with Jesus? So I want to just encourage you, okay? Just like David, we need to encourage ourselves because if you just watch the news and on all the all the uh, things that turn up on uh, Twitter or whatever you're watching nowadays, I'm cutting some of it loose. Uh, but uh, oh, uh, that reminds me, I want to tell you that uh, if I'm ever not on here anymore or YouTube or wherever you're you're seeing me on whatever platform. Uh, please, I, I would hope and ask you to go to AriseWatchman.com. That's AriseWatchman.com. That's Arise Watchman, not men, Watchman.com. Okay, a Watchman, okay, dot com. So anyway, um, go there and down to the bottom. There's a bunch of stuff on there that I think would encourage you to read some. Of, there's the prophecy I've told people about before, um, about the army of God. And that was given a couple of years ago, but, or more than that even, but uh, I just believe that's going to happen. And if you are a part of God's end time army, that's for you. So you ought to read that. That's actually, uh, you can go on Amazon and the book is, uh, the war between heaven and hell by St. Larius. And, uh, in there in the first chapter is that prophecy, but you can also just read the preview on Amazon and you should be able to read that prophecy. Also, it's on their website right there. You go up to the top of the page and it says, uh, there's little menu bars and you, you touch it there, and it's uh, the one that says prophetic word, vision and word. So uh, that is for you. That's a good message. So the church doesn't go out, you know, depressed and worried and fearful and suicidal. Though The church is going to move on no matter what. And there's been lots of prophecies, uh, and I believe that they're going to come to pass. I believe that some of the prophecies, uh, talking about revival and stuff, you know, we all link it to uh, politics and America and all this stuff, but... You know, God is bigger than all that. It's like, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, uh, the revival shows up when it's the worst times because people get down and they have to cry out to God and depend on God. But I'm not believing for that at this point. Um, I want to caution you on a couple of things. Number one, uh, don't be uh, wishy-washy, okay? God is also saying he doesn't want a lukewarm church. But, uh, you know, the enemy's plan is to come in and get us to use our own words to defeat ourselves. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You don't want to be uh, spouting off all this negative stuff and all this or giving up hope. But, you know, just fight against it. You use God's word and fight against it. That's what I've been doing. And uh, I'm telling you, his word works. And start entering into praise and worship. And you don't want to also uh, criticize um, God's people or criticize prophets. The Bible warns us against that. It says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. So we can do, we're going to give account for our words. So just be careful. You know, you can give your opinion uh, to somebody maybe, but I'm telling you, it's not even always good to do that because uh, you may not be saying the things of God. Just like Peter, he, he says, uh, he rebuked Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He turned around and put him in his place and said, you're not speaking the things of God. And so I, I'm still, you know what? I'm putting it in neutral. I'm worshiping and praising God and I'm believing for good things. I'm believing God is going to, I don't believe that, uh, I got this book in the, in the mail from the Billy Graham Association. It's about uh, the prayer march in 2020. I don't believe God had all us people go there and all the movements. I'm not even just talking about Christian stuff, but the secular things that are happening in the media and all that, that are conservative and pro-Trump and, and pro-God and and pro-constitution, and I just don't believe he'll bring us this far and just let us down. I think, you know, when all you've exhausted everything, then God sometimes, that's the time he moves in. And that's what happened at the Red Sea. That's what happened at Jericho. They were obedient. They did what he said, and God performed what he said, and he gave them the land. And uh, any many cases like that, I've talked about it before, Esther, and, and you, maybe you need to go and read some of that, but stand. And the, the word for us, I believe, in the body of Christ right now, too, is to stand. And having done all to stand, stand. 
and you can go on and talks about the armor of God, but just stand and stand and don't lose your confidence in the Lord. Don't cast your confidence away because God is not dead, <laughs> right? And uh, also, but he's alive and he's alive. And think about this. Think about how the disciples felt and the apostles felt. When, uh, and Jesus had told them several times, but they didn't quite, you know, understand it. And they didn't decode what he was saying. He was, just, and he told them outright, you know, that he was going to be crucified, basically, and he was going to die. And uh, yet, when it happened, what happened to them? The apostles. These are the men of faith that wrote the major parts of the Bible, okay, in the New Testament. And uh, what did they do? I think some of them fell apart. Peter denied him, and uh, they 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 went away, and and uh, you know they were scattered. Jesus told them they're going to be scattered, and they were scattered. But uh, guess what happened? <laughs> On the third day, Jesus rose again. So we're believing God. I'm still believing God to turn things around to do what exactly what He said He's going to do. And I want to encourage you to just enter into His gates with thanksgiving and and honor Him and praise Him. Put it in neutral. And start and, and uh, in terms of you know letting yourself be worried or anxious or fretting or trying to figure out how it's going to happen and there's been so many scenarios of how this thing's going to be turned around for trump but uh you know what i'm right now i can see you know a couple possibilities but uh, he says call on me and i will answer you and i will show you great and mighty things you know not so you're not probably going to know how he's going to do it until he does it and i've heard so many words say suddenly he's going to suddenly do things so i put my hope in that but what I fall off. I'm going to praise him and worship him. He's my foundation. Okay. So thank you, Jesus. I pray for everyone now. I ask you to bless them, help them, encourage them, oh God, and minister to them. And Lord, give them joy in the Lord. Give them joy in the spirit. Give them, Lord God, peace and give them uh, strength, oh God. You said be strong. That was a, really a command and, and, a, and a, a mandate. <laughs> it told us to be strong. Be strong. It didn't say, I hope you'll be strong. Or I'll help you be strong. It says, be strong. And it tells us how to be strong. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So, Lord God, we don't faint. No. You said, pray always and faint not. So we continue to fight the good fight of faith. It just putting our faith in you and knowing whatever happens, Lord, that all things work together for good to them that love God. And that if God be for us, who can be against us? It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. We look to you, God. We stand still and we watch for the salvation of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Heads up for your redemption draweth nigh. But we're going out in victory, not in defeat. Read that prophecy on my website, arisewatchman.com. Aloha. Aloha.